going on, everybody? Welcome back to a brand new episode of The Lead. Your host is always Harley Dugan. Jake Asman is here with me, guys. You know him from ESPN 97.5 Houston. He is on 3-7, to seven, the wheelhouse with Cody Stutes and Brad Kellner. All right, here we go, Jake. Uh, quick updates real quick on the Texans. I'm, we're going to do a real quick video because Jake doesn't have a lot of time with us right now. But quick updates, just Texans news. Chicago Bears, they decide to interview Pep Hamilton. I thought this was a guy that possibly could be retained on the staff. He declined an interview with the Panthers. He's possibly interviewing with the Bears. What are your quick thoughts? Yeah, no doubt. I, I mean, look, I like Pep Hamilton a lot, but the reality is the longer the search goes on, Pep Hamilton has every right to go consider other opportunities because there's no guarantee he's going to be back with the Texans. I think a lot of it comes down to, you know, the coach they hire. If they hire an offensive-minded coach, I don't know if Pep Hamilton's back because that person, if it's Kevin O'Connell or it's Joe Lombardi, they might want to call the plays and then Hamilton might want to go somewhere else where he gets a chance to be an, an OC and call plays and eventually kind of continue his trajectory to maybe being a head coach one day. So you know, the longer this goes on, I think there's a less likely possibility that Hamilton's back. But until he's actually hired by another team, you can still hold out hope if you're a Texans fan that maybe, depending on who the hire is, they could keep Pep Hamilton around. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I, I like just the continuity that Pep Hamilton would bring with Davis Mills being with him since Stanford. I think that would just work for his overall career. But hey, like you said, he has the right to do whatever the hell he wants. Okay, so it is what it is. Uh, moving forward, that's pretty much all the Texans news, other than if you want to look at plane traveling and plane gate, because that got huge on Texans Twitter. Uh, if you want to delve into that, hey, that's interesting. But we're going to move forward because Mr. Asman, Jake, you are Nick Casario. And like I messaged you, you are Nick Casario. The main principle of this video is how would you fix the Houston Texans? Well, I mean, that's such a loaded question, right? Because yeah. there's, there's there's a lot this team needs. I don't think it could be fixed all in one year. Look, I, I think the biggest things that will define Nick Casario include who this next coach is going to be. You got to get that right. So you start there. Hire a qualified coach, not Josh McCown, who's never coached in the NFL or college for a single year. We have no idea if he even wants to be a coach, if he truly will love it when he gets that opportunity, if he does get that opportunity. So you got to hire someone that is smart, that could get this team headed in the in the in the right direction because even with a lack of talent, coaching still matters. So that is, you know, item number 1 for Nick. And then really, you know, you start with the Deshaun Watson trade. You know, I could easily say, "Well, you got to nail the 2022 draft." Of course you do, but the Watson trade goes hand in hand with that draft because most people expect the Texans to trade Deshaun and and have multiple first round picks this year maybe more than two first round picks this year depending on the team you trade him to so there's a lot riding on that trade I think that's the the you know the biggest thing Casario has to get right you got to maximize to Sean's value if it means waiting until he settles the lawsuits or there's clarity in the legal situation so be it because you can't afford to give this guy away and not get a big return look you're never going to get you know, a fair return for Deshaun because we've never seen a player like him ever be traded, right? 26 years old, signed long-term, quarterback in their prime. It, it, it's not an apples to orange like thing we can compare this to or apples to apples thing we could compare this to, but he's got to get a lot back for him, man. I think you start with three first round picks and at least two or three second round picks and you try and get a bidding war going and hope that Deshaun's willing to waive the no trade for more than just one team this time around. So, you know, that, that to me has got to take such a priority here for the Texans. You have to get this trade right. And then, you know, as a GM, you got to hit on your draft picks. Now, if you're a Texans fan, I think you could give Casario some credit. He didn't have a first or a second round pick in his first draft with the Texans last year. And all five of the players he picked got on the field and played well and, and contributed, right? I mean, I think every Texan fan's excited about the potential of Davis Mills going into year two. He finished the year playing well. Nico Collins looks like a real player. Brevin Jordan looks like a real player. Garrett Wallow. Looks like a real player. Roy Lopez started basically all year on the defensive line, and he was a sixth-round pick. So there's some things to be um, you know, encouraged about Casario's first draft. But now you fast-forward to this year, you get the third overall pick. Are you taking a player there? Are you trading back? Are you, do you dare take a safety in Kyle Hamilton that high? Do you go offensive line because you might trade Laramie Tunsil? I mean, there's so many different um, scenarios that could present them themselves for the Texans here. So 
know, I think it really starts with those three items, coach, watch and trade and draft. You hit on that and this team will lay the foundation to being in a much better situation going forward. Yeah, uh, overall, and I agree with everything you've pretty much said. Overall, we if, if you're a Texan fan, you got to go knowing into this process that this is a two- to four-year process. Four-year being worst case scenario. You want it to be a two-year, including this year, and next year you show strides into becoming a whatever this team and Nick Casario wants them to become. The aspirations obviously are playoffs, get back into that, and then steps on the rungs of the ladder as you climb up there, you know, get better into the situation. But uh, overall, you know, you, you you knocked on three points, head coaching higher, and we're going to get with that later into this video. Uh, Gannon is one of the potential options. Uh, you also have other people that he's interviewed that are somewhat inadequate in terms of a head coaching resume. One of them being Heinz Ward, who a lot of people, I feel, overreacted a little bit. And then there's Josh McCown. What are you, What is the initial reactions to Josh McCown, and why is his name still buzzing around the city of Houston? Well, the initial reaction I had is, you know, Easterby is having a, a big influence in the candidates they're talking to. Easterby brought in Josh McCown when he was the interim general manager in 2020. McCown got an interview after the season ended in 2020, and he didn't get the job. But then we learned from John McClain, who reported that McCown was offered a, a spot on the coaching staff, and he turned it down. So now a year later, what has Josh McCown done to improve his coaching stock that he'd get another interview? So the first reaction I had is, I thought Jack Easterby wasn't involved in football decisions, right? That's what Nick Casario told us at the end of his press conference, uh, you know, to wrap the season. And, and that's just not true based on McCown getting a second interview. Now, I do think it's Casario's decision ultimately, but if they hire Josh McCown, I mean, goodness, would that just be a, a, a terrible decision? Not that I don't think Josh could be a good coach. I happen to like Josh McCown a lot. I think he could be a really good QB coach, maybe a good OC. But to hire a guy with zero coaching experience a year after you hired David Culley, who nobody had ever heard of, and you fired him after one year. I mean, the Texans already are like the laughing stock of the NFL by a lot of people. I mean, you're only going to, you know, increase that perception, that narrative that you're a joke if you hire a guy with zero experience. So my reaction is, for the love of God, please, this fan base deserves so much better than to be, you know, the guinea pig here and trying out Josh McCown as a guy who's never coached before. Yeah, you hired Josh McCown, and I'm going to just say it straight up. You shit on the city of Houston by hiring Josh McCown. You literally just shit on the city of Houston. It's, I mean, Josh McCown is just, like you said, zero head coaching experience, zero coordinator experience, zero high school level experience. Like, what what do I we know from Josh McCown other than – yeah, he's got a lot of great things being heard around the league, and you hear from players and other teams, you know, and he was essentially a quarterback's coach in his last three to five years in the league, whatever. None of that is on a resume. All he is is a former player, and there hasn't been, from what I could think of, former player, immediately head coach that's ever happened in this league. Not that I can think of off the top of my head, unless we're going back to, like, 50s, 60s NFL football, and that's way before me and you were alive. So, I mean, let's be real. Josh McCown deserves no place in a head coaching aspect, whatever, okay? Yeah. I want to focus on the Jonathan Gannons. I want to focus on the Kevin O'Connells. Those are the guys that I want to focus on. And, you know, I mean, even Heinz Ward has wide receiver coach, you know, at – uh, Florida Atlantic University, FAU. He was offensive intern with the Steelers in 2017, 2018. New York Jets, he was there as another offensive analyst slash wide receivers coach, essentially. So even he has some sort of a resume. I don't want them to hire Heinz Ward, okay? Don't get me wrong. I don't want that. But at least he has something to go, okay, well, I, I kind of see maybe he's – tinkling the water or something. I don't know. Whatever. But no Josh McCown, Jonathan Gannon, Kevin O'Connell. What do you think so far? Those are the two names that have been buzzing for the city of Houston, for the Texans. Kevin O'Connell obviously finishes the interview with the Texans. Why do you think they're waiting so long? 
Yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's a great question. I've been very disappointed by the the search process so far. I mean, Nick Casario said he was going to have a, a, a you know a wide search and don't assume anything. But you look at some of the interviews, and you know you you interview Josh McCown and Heinz Ward, two guys that don't deserve the opportunity to be even be considered. It's just a waste of everyone's time to even interview yeah. them. And then you look at some of the other candidates, like all right, Jonathan Gannon. I like the name; it's intriguing. Kevin O'Connell, intriguing. You know, Brian Flores, I mean, what happened to him? He doesn't have a job yet. He was the first person you spoke to. Why aren't you trying to do everything in your power to set up a second interview with that guy? Because that's the yeah. most qualified guy that you've spoken to so far. And I've just been surprised they haven't wanted to talk to Debico Ryans, who's a legend in this city, uh, a franchise great. Why don't you talk to him? He's getting interviews from across the league. Josh McDaniels or Gerard Bale. I don't want a Patriot guy, but I'm just surprised mm -hmm. that you'd rather talk to Josh McCown and Heinz Ward over, you know, two guys from the – Patriot way that have very good resumes. Certainly McDaniels deserves another shot to be a head coach and he might go to Vegas. So it, it's, it's, it's been odd, but I'll say this, as long as they don't hire McCown and they don't actually end up hiring that Patriot guy, I, I don't count Flores in that because Flores had success elsewhere. So I think he's mm -hmm. a good coach, but mm -hmm. as long as they like, they, if they hire Gannon, I think that'd be a, a solid hire. If they hire O'Connell offensive minded guy, he reminds me a lot of Zach Taylor, who's done a great job this past year with the Bengals. I think Texans fans would be open-minded and get on board with that. But if they hire, you know, Gerard Mayo, who they haven't even interviewed yet, or they hire mm. Heinz Ward or Josh McCown, I mean, this fan base deserves so much more than that. Yeah, I totally agree. If you delve into two of the guys, O'Connell and Gannon, I've delved into more of their what could be their potential staff. I mean, Gannon potentially brings Mike Zimmer as his defensive coordinator. They have a connection with the Minnesota Vikings. They also He also was underneath Zimmer in 2007 with the Atlanta Falcons. So Gannon has a history with Mike Zimmer. Uh, you, go, you could potentially bring in Terrence Newman, a former player as a defensive backs coach, who everywhere he's been with, he's been under Mike Zimmer, whether it's the Cowboys, whether it's the Bengals, whether it's the Vikings. And so those are two, boom, that's not too bad right there. Defensively is what you're looking at for – uh, Jonathan Gannon and then offensively you can bring back Gary Kubiak kind of lineage with his son Clint Kubiak as an offensive coordinator potentially if, if the Vikings do not keep him uh, so hey Gannon has a guy in Clint Kubiak Mike Zimmer that's not too bad in my opinion as an overall little just a little glimpse of what the staff could look like and then you look at Kevin O'Connell offensively I'm like okay Wes Phillips is a name that's going to be thrown as an offensive coordinator. Obviously the son of Wade Phillips, obviously the grandson of Bum Phillips, a Houston legend. So every Texan fan, everyone in their mama is going to be excited about a Wes Phillips in the last name being reunited with the city of Houston again. At least I would think so. And then so offensively, that's not too bad for Kevin O'Connell. Now defensively, I'm still trying to do some more research because I haven't really found anything that really excites me yet. But we'll get there when we get there. What are your initial thoughts to both of the potential staffs you can see from O'Connell and Gannon? I think the biggest question you'd have about the coaching staffs is how involved is the coach in actually hiring the staff? Yeah. Like it's tough to say, yeah. right? David Cully gets br brought in. He didn't hire Lovey Smith. He didn't mm -hmm. hire Tim Kelly. Tim Kelly was a holdover to try and make Sean Watson happy before the legal yeah. stuff popped up, right? So I think that'd be a big question. If they hire Josh McCown, he's going to have no say in his staff because they're just going to hire the staff for him. That's someone yep. that they can obviously control. You know, if you bring in O'Connell, it'd be interesting because he's an offensive guy. Is he going to call the plays as the head coach? You'd think he probably would. What does that mean for Pep Hamilton? Who does he mm -hmm. look to add to his staff to replace Pep? Uh, is Josh McCown maybe on the staff as a quarterback coach or an OC with O'Connell calling the plays? as the head coach, because if you remember, O'Connell was in Cleveland at the same time that McCown was one of the quarterbacks there, so yep. there's a connection. So uh, it's really tough to say, just because we don't know how involved Nick Casario is going to be in hiring the staff for the coach. So I think it's tough to kind of get an idea on what's going to happen. I think it really comes down to the type of coach they hire in the first place. Yeah, I should have proceeded that to that question, because that's the biggest topic is, will Nick Casario let them pick their staff like we didn't see it with David Coley and people have you know talked a lot about him being under the mic and him giving David Coley all these well you need to call a timeout or giving him different overlay on what he should do and what he should not do now my opinion on that is David Coley 
shouldn't have been a head coach, so that's why he's telling him what to do. He's been doing it since New England. Not saying he's telling Bill Belichick what to do. Obviously, there's uh, seven things on his finger to say otherwise against Nick Casario. But, I mean, David Coley is nowhere near competent, and I think that's why Nick Casario stepped into that role a little bit more, let's say. And I feel like the media has kind of overblown that a little bit and a lot of Texan fans as well. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's tough to say, right? I mean, was it just David Culley or is Nick Casario very controlling? This next yeah. head coach will tell us a lot more into that. You know, I'll say this. I don't have an issue with Casario being on the headsets during games. Like if Bill Belichick wanted him there, then I think it's fine for Casario, who's been a former coach before, right? He coached wide receivers in New England the, in 2007. I would have no issue with that going forward. But you wonder, are they potentially not getting the best candidates for this job because of the concern that Nick is very overbearing. That's a question that I don't know if we're ever, you know, truly going to get the answer to, but it at least has to be discussed as a possibility. So I don't mind them being on the headsets. You just wonder with the Easterby factor, um, Casario being so heavily involved, maybe picking the next coach's staff. You wonder if that could maybe be the difference in the Texans landing a bona fide stud coaching uh, candidate. So that, that's really the biggest question. But as far as him being on the headsets during the game, I think that's been a little overblown by fans and media. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's the end of the world. Yeah, I, I don't think so either. And I totally agree with you. We've named a few coaches so far, and I got a list of coaches right now. Rapid fire. I call this segment smash or pass. I give you a list of coaches and it's up to you. That's pretty self-explainable. Just high school all over again. Here we go. <laughs> so Texan fans, they've gone crazy over this. They flood my mentions over this name. I don't know why. Lovey Smith. Uh, pass for him to be the head coach. If he's brought back as the D.C., no issue. I thought he did a pretty good job given the, the issues that the roster presented itself with. Smash or pass. Jim Harbaugh. Smash, but he's not taking the job. Nope. He's not going to work for Casario at Easterby. Harbaugh is going to come in and want to get his own guys there, and they're not going to let him do that. For sure. And again, side note, this list was was made a few weeks ago now, and it's starting to be like, oh, well, it probably none of these will happen. But we still will continue. Jim Caldwell. Honestly, smash. The guy, the guy won uh, 11 games, nine games, and nine games in three mm-hmm. of his four years with the Lions. He went to the Super Bowl with the Colts. He interviewed for the job with the Texans last year. He would yeah. provide credibility for this franchise. So, you know, compared to some of the other options, yeah. smash. Dennis Allen. Uh, smash. He's experienced. He's not from the Patriot tree. It's it's a name that I think they should be considering. You know, th- these are good names. Like, even if you don't hire them, talk to them. What do you got to lose? Exactly. Todd Bowles. Uh, I'm pass on this. Now, full disclosure, I grew up in New York. I watched Todd Bowles coaching the Jets. Look, mm. I think if he hires a better offensive staff and learns how to, you know, handle the clock and be more aggressive like a modern-day coach should be, maybe second time around he'd be better. But he leaves a lot to be desired as a coach. I would pass on this if I'm the Texans. I'd rather hand them a count, but that's not saying much. Yeah. Doug Peterson. Smash. The guy won a Super Bowl with a backup quarterback against Tom Brady and Bill Belichick less than four years ago. How has Jacksonville not hired this guy? You want to get Trevor Lawrence right? Hire Doug Peterson. Ooh, wow. Strong on Doug Peterson. Matt, well, not more, no more Matt Eberflus. He went to the Bears. Switch that one out. Eric Bieniemy. Uh, smash compared to the, some of the other candidates. Yeah. The enemy, I I'd give him a shot. I, I, they interviewed him last year. Why haven't they spoken to him this year? About to be hired, should be hired. I assume by the Jaguars, but he's still on the list. Byron Leftwich. smash. I think young offensive mm. mind experience. He's, he's probably the modern type of coach you're looking at. Interesting. Brian Dabble. Yeah, I, I'm a smash for him as well. Look at the job that he's done with Josh Allen. He's got experience away from the Patriots with Nick Saban, with different organizations. I mean, I, I think he's going to get the New York Giants job, but, I mean, why don't the Texans interview the guy? He's smash. Yeah, I mean, he has the connections. What I always say is coaches can grow. Like, Brian Devil did not does not have a great track record in terms of his other positional coaches with the Dolphins, the Browns, and it, it's really bad. But he goes to Alabama – one year, works with Tua, now with the Bills. He's done amazing things. Brian Flores. Smash. It was the first person they spoke to. He, the, guy, the guy won 10 games and nine games in back-to-back years with Ryan Fitzpatrick and Tua as his quarterbacks. 
I mean, the guy could coach. Now, they got to help him with the offensive staff because he had three different offensive coordinators in three years. So that's a legitimate uh, criticism of Flores. But, I mean, considering he knows Easterby, he knows Casario, he's very tight with both. If they hired him, I think it actually could work because he knows what he's signing up for. Mm -hmm. Next one, potential hire for the Raiders as well, Josh McDaniels. Not my preference to go Patriot way, but if they do go Patriot way, I would hire McDaniel, so this would be a smash. Think about it. The guy did a great job with Mac Jones. He's been a head coach before 10 years ago. He's mm -hmm. paid his dues. He's learned from those mistakes. He knows Casario. His brother, Ben, is on the Texans coaching staff yep. now, so he knows the organization. I, I, I would say I would say uh, smash if they could get him, but seemingly he's probably going to get the Vegas Raiders job if he you know waited this long to interview for it in the first place. Yeah. Uh, Derrick Mayo. I'm a pass on Mayo. I just I don't want to go down the Patriot way again. You know, it's too big of a risk. He's he's an inside linebackers coach. He's not calling the plays. Mm. He's more qualified than some of the guys they've spoken to, <clears throat> Josh McCown. But it, it's not saying much. I'm very anti McCown. Mayo, I'd be more open to, but it's not like a guy that I'm running to hire if I'm the Texans. Rumors have took a nosedive for this guy, but he's still on the list. Patrick Graham. A pass. Giants defense was awful this year. I would stay away. Interesting. Um, well, I, I got to take him off the list. Nathaniel Hackett's off the list. Uh, next one, Jonathan Gannon. Yeah, smash. Yeah, it, it's interesting. He's not a Patriot guy. It'd be an outside-the-box hire, but other teams think highly of him and have spoken to him. I think it'd be an interesting hire by the Texans. I, I would give him, uh, you know, I, I would credit the Texans if they did this, and I, I think it'd be a good hire. Smash. Next one, we've harped on it, D'Amico Ryans. Smash. I mean, Texans fans, you guys know. He's a great mm -hmm. player. He's paid his dues as a coordinator now. He's coming from the, the Shanahan tree, which has been super successful. The Niners defense, despite not having great cornerbacks, continues to be elite, holding Rodgers to 10 points last Saturday, holding Cowboys to uh, uh, to 17 points at, mm -hmm. you know, on the road in the first round. D'Amico Ryans, man. I've heard you know Jets head coach Robert Sala talk about D'Amico saying yep. he's going to be a head coach someday. Why not hire him now to be your coach, Houston? Mm -hmm. Kellen Moore. Uh, pass on Kellen Moore. I I'm not over how that game ended for the Cowboys a couple yeah. weeks ago. That, like, what are you doing? Quarterback draw, Kellen Moore? Come on. Yeah, I didn't expect that. <laughs> I don't think nobody did, actually. Clint Kubiak. Not to be a head coach, so pass, but on the coaching staff of the person they hire, absolutely. Scott Turner. Pass, but another guy that you consider mm. for the staff. Uh, we harped on his name. Kevin O'Connell. Uh, smash. I like O'Connell. It reminds me of Zach Taylor, as I said earlier in this uh, conversation. And look, he comes from the McVay slash Shanahan tree. It's been successful, so why not? Last one, Mike McDaniel. Man, I, Mike McDaniel he seems like a cool dude, man. That uh, who Mike Jones thing the other day that, that he did, awesome. that was awesome. So, yeah, Mike McDaniel, I don't know enough about him to say, yep, he's definitely going to be great, but I'm intrigued by him. And obviously, young offensive mind kind of fits the trend where we've seen the NFL go the last couple of years. Former Texans offensive intern with Gary Kubiak. He was here with Kyle Shanahan, Matt LaFleur, Gary Kubiak. Hey, uh, people need to take a look at the Gary Kubiak's coaching tree a little bit yeah. more because, my goodness, Robert Sala was also on that staff. There's a bunch of guys that's getting head coaching love right now from his overall staff. Hey, this was fun, man. We're about to wrap this up. Uh, before we do go, I want to make sure that Jake, because I didn't get to do this in the beginning of the video, go ahead and introduce yourself and promote whatever you need to promote, man. Go ahead and get going. Sure. My name is Jake Asman. I host the afternoon show on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5 here in Houston. That's the ESPN radio affiliate. For those of you that listen to sports radio in Houston, listen to ESPN 97.5. We're the only FM sports station in the city. The show I host is called The Wheelhouse. It's from 3 to 7, Monday through Friday, with me, Cody Stutes, and Brad Kellner. We're the only three-person show in the city of Houston. We have a lot of fun. We talk Texans, Astros, Rockets. We talk about the NFL and college football, whatever the big stories are of the day. We talk about that every single day. So check us out three to seven. And uh, if you want 
to you know get some more daily content from the radio show, check me out on YouTube at Jake Asman is where you can find me. I post segments from the show every day. And if you want to get some more takes on Houston sports, you can follow me on my Twitter and Instagram at Jake Asman, J-A-K-E-A-S-M-A-N. Yeah, guys. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jake, for the video. Remember, guys, don't ever forget to like and subscribe to the lead on YouTube, as well as the Jake Asman show. Show him some love. Give him some credit. The ESPN 97.5, the wheelhouse. I definitely got to tune into it more. I'm honest. I don't I don't watch 97.5 FM. I don't watch a lot of FM radio. So I will dig into it a lot more going into the offseason. So as always, guys, Go Astros, go Rockets, go Texans. Y'all have a blessed day.